So that seal is definitely going to have to be replaced. Hi everybody, it's Franny and welcome to a bonus episode in our 1964 Porsche 356 C Series. So remember this? You see that? There's an ocean of transmission oil down there. Look at that gear oil. See that? So what happened is that the shift rod seal has gone bad and it's allowing fluid from the transmission to travel through the boot on there and right into the tunnel and it's just filling it up. So that also means that our transmission was very, very low as well. So that's all that stuff is super bad. This little guy here is the culprit. It's just a teeny little seal and that's going to be today's project is to swap out this shift rod seal and then we'll take the car out, kind of warm it up a little bit and we're going to replace the transmission fluid as well. So that's kind of today's project. Little bonus. Thought it might be kind of fun. All right, well, let's start by swapping out this little seal. Our first step is going to be to remove this access panel here on top of the tunnel so we can get a look at the shift coupler. Now we just lift it up. It has a little bit of a tongue in the front of it. So we lift it up from the back. Let's kind of work it up. There we go. And there's the little tongue I was talking about on the front. So just be aware of that. Now the rubber boot in here is shot as well. So we're going to be replacing that. So we'll push this forward just to start with so we can get a look at the, our coupler. So this guy, this coupler here is actually how you adjust the shift linkage on the car. So you want to mark it before you take it apart so you can put it right back where it was. I'm going to put the car to start with in fourth gear and that'll pull our coupler forward a bit and allow us to mark it a little bit easier. There we go. I'm going to use a punch awl here to just scribe this shaft a little bit. It'll give us a great place to start when we put it all back together. And you want to mark it in two ways. So longitudinally and then around it as well because it can twist and put shaft will go in and out. Now I'll put the car back into third gear. There we go. And now we can loosen up our coupler the rest of the way. All right. Now with our coupler good and loose, we'll go ahead and put it back into fourth gear, which will pull this shift rod off of the shift shaft there. There we go. And here's our scribe marks across here and then the little vertical one that's for the slot here. So we've got our marks. We're all set to proceed. Next, we're going to go ahead and raise the car and remove our shift coupler and that will give us the ability to remove that old seal. Our first step is just to pull this rubber boot back and sort of pop it off here. It's a little oily. Okay. Uh, that's exactly our problem. Ew. All right, slide you back. Yuck. All right. And all of that oil is just from a couple of days of it sitting. I cleaned this out completely. The tunnel, this rubber boot, the whole thing just a little bit ago, about a week ago. And it's even more. So this is just kind of a mess, huh? Well, our next step is to get this little guy out. Looks like somebody safety wired this thing on. So we'll have to take this safety wire, loosen this up. Okay. This little guy is an eight millimeter, so we'll go ahead and loosen this thing up. Now this little guy goes into a divot in the shift shaft itself, so we can just work this off. Make sure it's loose all the way, and there's our divot there that this guy goes into. So it only goes on one way. We don't need to mark this before we take it off, is kind of my point, which is kind of nice. Now just to make life a little bit easier, we'll go ahead and pull this boot off. I have kind of an interesting tool to pull this seal out. I bought this a while back. It's kind of the hot setup for getting these things out, but it's a little weird looking and a little strange. So it's going to take me a little bit of fussing with it, I think, to get it oriented just perfectly. But in theory, these things are pretty cool and you can use them to really pull these seals out. Let's put our little tooth in there. There we go. I'm going to use this end of it and see if we can pull this guy out. Oh, look at that. How awesome is that? There we go. That's perfect. Now, you don't have to worry about lots and lots of oil coming out because there is a bushing on the other side of this. This is just the oil seal. Now, what I'm going to do is pull the shaft out a little bit. Let's run this little guy in. 
just so we've got something to hold on to. All right, there we go. Pulled our shaft out. Now the reason for that is this shaft could possibly have a burr on it somewhere. So I want to make sure that the shaft is completely smooth. And I do feel a heck of a burr over on this side. Yeah, bad one. And that may be what's chewing up our seal. All right. Can you see this here? Boy, this is just, there's, this is terrible here. That's a heck of a gouge in that thing. That's what destroyed the last seal. That's got to be it. Well, I'm going to use a small file here to knock this down a little bit. And then I also have some emery cloth that I'll throw on it when I get done. But we've got to get that notch out of here. This is just terrible. So let's just work at this very carefully. We don't want to make any more damage. See if we can knock this down. This is probably fairly strong steel would be my guess. Somebody did a real number on this. It already feels a bit better, but we still have quite a ways to go. Well, it's starting to feel a little better. You know, it's never going to seal properly over this gash either. Wow. All right, that's the worst of it down. Let's try a little bit of our sandpaper here and see if we can smooth this out a little bit more. And this is fairly aggressive. I'm using 320 here. We'll just start with this. We'll move to some higher grit in a minute. This is 1000 grit I'm going to use on this after I've used that 320. This is 2000, so this will give us a little more of a polish, bringing some of the shine back. Okay, well, let's see where we are with that. Wow, that is just the deepest gouges. Well, I think the gouges in this shaft are just a little too deep. I did kind of push my little new seal over it and just sort of felt how it felt over the top of it. And it just, it's not really, I don't think it's really gonna work. I think they're just too deep and I think we're still gonna have some leaks. So really, I think the absolutely proper way to fix this would be to pull the entire transmission, pull the nose off the transmission, pull this shaft out, weld it, and then put it on a lathe, turn it, and and bring it right back to the way it was factory. That's really the correct way to do it, but that's uh, quite a bit of work. Gotta pull the engine, gotta pull the transmission, gotta pull, it, pull all this bit out and all that. And since it's really not sitting inside that seal most of the time, I'm gonna try something. It's a little chimpy first, but we'll see if it works. I've got some JB Weld, and what I'm gonna do, this sounds stupid, but I'm gonna use it as a filler. So I'm gonna clean this shaft super, super well, mix up a bit of this, apply it over this, and we'll let it sit up overnight, and then I'm gonna sand it back down to where it's perfectly smooth. JB Weld's pretty amazing stuff, and it can really stick to this metal for quite a long time and that may be perfect for this I don't know but it certainly is a lot easier and a heck of a lot cheaper than pulling the shaft out and either replacing it or getting it reworked so as a first step let's give this a try and see if it works my first step is going to be to use a little bit of brake clean on it and just wipe this area down it has to be spotlessly clean in order for this to stick properly. Brake clean is great, but I'm gonna follow it up with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. All right, that's nice and clean, and we can see this detail quite well, I think. Next, I'll go ahead and mix up a little batch of our JB Weld. I'm mixing up my JB Weld here. It's kind of nice, they've got a white and a black, so you really should get a gray if it's good and mixed. And I think epoxy, really the trick to it is just to mix the crap out of it. It just does much, much better if you just mix and mix and mix. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this quite a bit. You should also feel it kind of thin up a little bit because epoxy will warm up as it starts to set. This is very long cure epoxy, this stuff. It takes like almost 24 hours for it to really set up. All right, I think we're all set. We'll go ahead and apply it. I've got 
just a little um, piece of sort of plastic sized cardboard I think that might work really well as a squeegee so uh, let's see how it goes. That big batch of epoxy and all we need is just a dab. It's funny all that just for a teeny little bit. A little low spot right there as well. All right. See if we can squeegee this a little bit. You know, I think I'm gonna go with that. Clean up a little bit of this excess that's here. We'll let that set overnight so it's good and hard and I'll hit it tomorrow with the sandpaper and hopefully it's gonna work. It's the next morning and our epoxy has set. So let's take a look at it and see what we need to do to shape it. Now it looks really good here. It's actually pretty, pretty close. Did amazingly well. I have our 320 grit sandpaper here on an actual sanding block so that we get a nice flat even sand on our first go round here. All right, just wanna be very gentle here, but we wanna take off any of the epoxy we don't need. See how we're doing there, looks good. A little ways to go. Yeah, it's feeling really good. I think we just have a little bit more to go. Well, that's feeling great actually. I actually cannot feel it at all. Feels completely smooth. All right, that looks great. I think we're good with the sanding block. At this point, let's move to our 1000 grit. Well, that's starting to look really good, don't you think? Look at that, you can just see the epoxy where the divot was. We still have a few of these fine scratches. I'll see if I can get them out. Well, that's really starting to feel great. It's super duper smooth. I can't feel anything with my finger. I'm going to finish off with a little bit of 2000 grit here just to try and get a little bit of that polish back. But I think we're super duper close. I'm feeling really good about this. Wipe that down and take a look and see, see what it looks like. Oh, look at that. It looks great. I even got a bit of that polish back. It's totally smooth. Oh yeah, I think that works great. Let's see if our seal is happy with it. Yep, that feels really good. I'm not feeling anything on the seal here, so I think we're pretty good. Our shift rod feels great, so I think we're ready to actually install our seal. So all I'm going to use is a long socket here, and I'm just going to press it on carefully and push it into place. Before we go too much further, can't forget to put our rubber booty back on. We'll have to take everything off with the stupid booty back on. So let me go ahead and do that. With our boot on, our next step is going to be to reinstall the shift coupler here. Pretty simple, just slide it on, screw this guy on, and that's pretty much that. Perfect. With our shift coupler back on, now we go back into the car, into the tunnel, and we're gonna connect it back to our shifter rod. I'm gonna take this opportunity to clean out the tunnel a little more. I have washed this out like four times, but there's still a little bit of gear oil in there, so I'm gonna, gonna hit it with a little bit of brake clean, see if I can get it the last little bit mopped up. We're all set to reconnect our coupler, but before we do that, we don't want to forget to put our new boot on, because once we put that thing on, we won't be able to put our boot on. We'll have to take our little clamp off the end of this, this shift shaft here. All right, we had to take the bolt out because there's a little notch here that the bolt sits in. Now I pushed our old boot way up forward there, but you can see here, take a look at this thing. This is just terrible. This is all mangled and horrible. All right, and we'll refit our new boot here. We're gonna push it out of the way. Now we can put our coupler back on. Across the top here like that. And then our bolt. With that clamp back on and our new boot in place, let's go ahead and hook this up to the coupler. Remember, we've got our little marks, so we're gonna get pretty close and see how it is. If, it's, if we've got it, great. If not, we can adjust it further. That's just a start there. All right, that looks pretty good actually. Check that out, okay? Well, I think that's actually really, really close. I'm gonna lock that down at this point and then we'll go for a drive and if we need to readjust it, super simple to do it. Third and fourth, first and second, and reverse. Okay, 
Took the car out, ran it around, got it good and hot, did lots of shifts. Well, I think we have our shift coupler exactly where it needs to be. The car is shifting really, really well. This is nice and tight now, so we'll just put our boot back on. We just want to work this over the big flange here. This is going to be a little bit fussy. All right, that looks great. Look at that, huh? All right. Our next step is to get our plate back on here. All right, great. Well, that's it for the inside of the car. Let's go ahead and get under the car and see how our new shift rod seal is working. Okay. How does it look? Actually, it looks perfect. Totally dry. Everything looks great on that. Take a look at that. Doesn't that look nice? I think we solved our leaky transmission shift shaft seal, huh? All that's left now is just to put our rubber booty back on. Well, woohoo! I think our seal is holding great. Our JB weld worked exactly as I had hoped it would. And I went out and shifted a ton and it's completely dry. So yay, super awesome. All right, believe it or not, that leaves only one more task and that is to drain and refill the entire transmission fluid. Well, that's it, we're all full. Took a little more than I thought, maybe about four quarts or so, but I think we're really good here. And with our shaft seal fixed, we shouldn't be losing any fluid. Transmission shouldn't ever go low. They don't burn or use fluid. The worst they'll do is leak it. So we're all done under here. Well, I think that turned out really well. Our shift rod seal is holding, no leaks under the car, so that's super awesome. We replaced our transmission fluid and we're all good there. Boy, this has been quite the series, huh? Quite a bit getting done on the car. This is a car that came in for, let's see, um, a wonky idle and a little bit of fuel leak up front, and that was it. <laughs> and we rebuilt carburetors, we did brake work, we put in new taillights, we did all sorts of stuff in this car. So at any rate, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the entire series. And if you missed any of the episodes, I'll link to the whole, the whole series of it at the end of the episode. Go ahead and click on that and watch the ones you've missed. They're pretty awesome. Well, all right. Thank you so, so much for watching. And as always, a special thank you to our Patreon supporters. If you've got any questions, or comments on this car or anything else, just go ahead and leave them down below and I'll get right to them. And we have more coming on the channel. So we've got lots more going on. We've got our 3-2 Carrera project that we're working on and I've got stuff to do on the i8, the 993, all sorts of stuff. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so now and then hit the little bell next to it to get notified and you'll get a little notification every time we upload a video because you won't want to miss anything. So, all right, thank you so, so much. And until next time, Safe travels. Bye.